Welcome to Discipleship Class 3.0. This is going to be our fourth video in a series of 10 lessons. Let me show you our entire curriculum. In this Discipleship Class, we're calling it 3.0. It's been revised three times. Um, again, as times have changed, we've changed the format. It started out that I taught this in class uh, and we had it in writing. And then uh, as times changed, I uh, upgraded it and put the, uh, the, and we used to call it new members class and we put it on CD and then we had the quiz online. Uh, and now as we are in a pandemic and times have changed, we've shifted for this time and made it available for everybody on video and our quiz is still online. So this is our entire curriculum. There is a video on baptism and the Holy Spirit. You can go back and view that. Um, there's a video on denomination. Two and three were combined as uh, one video. So it's on denomination. And we talk a lot about holiness and sanctification. Uh, the third video, uh, which is all on YouTube, they're how all of the videos are housed on YouTube. And uh, uh, the let's see, the third one was on religion versus relationship. And this video, this is our fourth video once again, and we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. And we're going to have, I think this is kind of in-depth. Uh, I hope it doesn't go beyond 45 minutes, but we want to answer the question uh, today. Do we keep the Ten Commandments as they were written in the Old Covenant? Uh, next videos, upcoming videos will be on salvation and repentance, the sacraments of the church, uh, tithing. Uh, we'll look at it from the Old Testament versus the New Testament. We'll talk a little bit about spiritual gifts, discipleship, and fellowship. And I think I can combine uh, number nine and ten into one video. So, amen, here we go. We're ready to get into this lesson. And I am Pastor Kim Graves, and I am proud to be the senior pastor of New Vision uh, Ministries. And we wanna go right on into this lesson today. Um, thank you for supporting us. And uh, I always say, and I'll probably say at the end, if you are a leader and you'd like to share or use any of this curriculum for your new converts coming into your church, please feel free to have them watch these videos. So today, this video, the fourth video is going to be dedicated to the Ten Commandments. Do we keep the Ten Commandments. That's the question that we have in front of us today. Now, let's go back and just uh, refresh. The Ten Commandments are also referred to as the law. So uh, you'll see it sometimes it's called the law and, and other times it's called the Ten Commandments. And it was given by God um, these commandments were given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai in the Old Covenant or the Old Testament. And back then, uh, back then, let me make this a little bit bigger. I got a little notes I'm going off of. Uh, back then, Israel, which were God's people, they could not go to God for themselves to ask for forgiveness of sins. Back then, only the high priest was the one that could act as a mediator. And a mediator is one who represents God to the people and represents the people to God. And so only the high priest could do that. And when the people sinned during that time, several animals, particularly lambs and bulls and pigeons, depending on your, your income status, um, they had to be slaughtered and their blood was placed in the tabernacle upon the mercy seat. Various animal sacrifices were made throughout the year for different types of sin and trespass. The high priest 
And all of this is recorded in the book of Exodus. The high priest went into the Holy of Holies one time a year continually to make atonement. And, uh, and that atonement, we break that word down, is at one uh, with men, at one with men. Uh, so the high priest went in once a year continually Amen. To make atonement for not only the sins of the people, but also for his own sins. Now, when Jesus came, hallelujah, when Jesus came, he put a stop to all of the different Old Testament sacrifices because he offered himself as a spotless lamb one time, hallelujah, one time and for all. And that's all it took. That's all it took. His blood put us back into right relationship with God. And when we accept Christ as Lord and Savior, amen, he is our atonement. Now, this is the at one men part. Atonement means his blood sacrifice brought us, it brought us back, amen, into relationship with God. And let me interject here that although God does not require us to sacrifice animals today, he still requires a living sacrifice. And you can find that in Romans chapter 12, verse number one. Another thing that Jesus did for us by coming to earth and offering himself as a perfect sacrifice was that he condensed, listen, hear me, he condensed the Ten Commandments into two commandments. I want to say it again, and this is my word that I choose to use, condensed. Amen. The question is, amen, did, were the Ten Commandments done away with? No, they were not. Amen. Were the Ten Commandments abolished? No, they were not. But when Jesus came, amen, one of the things that was accomplished in his coming was that he condensed, condensed the Ten Commandments into two commandments. And we're going to take a closer look at that. Yes, amen. I like to say like flow, amen, that, that she was not the first, amen, to the first one to bundle. Amen. Jesus bundled. It's a bundling, amen, that took place. There was a bundling that took place. Understand that the first four of the Ten Commandments deal with our relationship with God. Let me say that again. That's noteworthy. The first four of the Ten Commandments deals with our relationship with God. And the remaining six of the Ten Commandments deal with our relationship with man. Let me see if I can get an example for you. I'm going to share my screen. I got a lot, amen, a lot uh, to share. So be patient with me here. I've got a lot of different tabs open. And I want to show you, uh, we're going to look at the Ten Commandments here, and I'll share my screen, and let's just talk about it, because what I said, I want to quantify it for you. All right. So here we go. We should be looking at my screen now, and uh, let's see. Let's move that out of the way. All right. So let's look at the traditional Ten Commandments. That's what this uh, video is devoted to. And we're just going to say uh, all of them. I'm going to read them. And, and what I said before we put up this slide is that there are 10 commandments here. You know, later on, they went and added and kept adding to these original 10 to where they became over 600 and over 600 commandments. But um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm on the screen here. I think I want to be on the screen. So um, again, I say these videos are not perfect. They are unscripted, amen, but they do fulfill their purpose in teaching, amen, whoever has an ear to hear. So these 10 commandments 
out of 10, we said that the first four of those 10 commandments relate to your relationship with God. And then the final, the remaining six relate to your relationship with man or mankind. So the first one, you shall have no other gods before me. That relates to God. He wants to be number one. It's all about him. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Whatever it is, we can make anything a God. So commandment number one relates to God. Number two, you shall not make for yourselves an idol that's relating to God. He said, I'm a jealous God. I don't, he said, in fact, my name is jealous. Amen. Worship me and me and him alone. Glory to God. Number three, you shall not make for yourselves an idol. I already said that, didn't I? That was number two. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God that relates to God. Number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That relates to God. And again, my emphasis, these are the original Ten Commandments that are found in the under the old in the old covenant in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. You can find all of that there. Then now we get to uh, number five. Honor your father and your mother. This relates to mankind. And you know, in one of the other videos, I talk about, amen, the vertical relationship, and that's our relationship to God, and our horizontal relationship, which is our relationship to those that we come in contact with daily. And that vertical and that horizontal represent the cross of Jesus Christ. Both of those relationships have to be worked on. And as you can see here in the Ten Commandments, some of these relate to God, your vertical relationship with God, and the remaining six relate to your horizontal relationship with mankind. And the first one is honor your father and your mother. Amen. Next is you shall not murder. Notice here they all relate, these relate to man. Let me see if I can get a, a tool here. Hold on here. I might as well try to use everything I have at my disposal. Amen. So these relate to man. Thou shall not commit adultery. Relating to man, you commit adultery uh, with man. Thou shall not steal. Relating to man, thou shall not give false testimony. Don't lie on nobody. And finally, that or you shall not covet. All of this relates to man. Now I want to go back to that statement. The first four of the Ten Commandments relate to your relationship with God. And the remaining six of the Ten Commandments relate to your relationship with mankind. And the question on the floor is, do we keep these Ten Commandments? Let me tell you, amen, because of what Jesus did, he made it so much easier, amen, for us. As I said uh, uh, before we went to these slides, one of the things that was accomplished uh, by Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross was that he condensed these 10 commandments into two commandments. And these are the ones Ma'am and sir, students, whoever is viewing, this is good news. He condensed them into two. Hallelujah. And this is our commandments for today. One, amen, the first four has been bundled into thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this relates to God. And so what you must understand in this first one, hallelujah to God, in this first one lies all four of the original Ten Commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And that relates to God. 
The second one, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And this relates to man. So please, I want you to get it that the first four of the 10 commandments are here. And here we're reading out of the New, New Testament. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. So this is what we walk in right now. Thou shalt love. This is what we have to worry about. Because, amen, if you get this together, your love for God, that vertical relationship, when that vertical relationship is together, amen, it's going to influence your uh, your horizontal relationship as it relates to man. Again, the second one, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and it relates to man. Let's go back and look at the original 10 again. Hallelujah. And you ought to just give this, this helps us, amen, to walk so much more freely. Amen. So here we have the original 10 commandments, the law that was given, amen, by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. 10 things, amen. Four of them related to God. Six of them related to man. But when Jesus came, hallelujah, hallelujah, he condensed them and bundled them, bundled them. Four of them are right here in the first commandment. And we're going to look at scripture on this. Amen. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Again, relating to God. And second, second, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. So I think, amen, that is such good news for the believer. Amen. To not have to, amen, worry about trying to keep 10, amen, but, but focus on two, amen, focus on two. And we thank God, amen, for what Jesus did. That's just one of the accomplishments that he did when he came to earth, amen, and died for our sins. Amen. So, amen. Let me just, uh, we're going to get some scripture on this and uh, let's uh, go into scripture now. Let's go into scripture now and I'm going to share that screen. All right. Amen. This is good. All right. So, yes, let's begin to get our scriptures. And our first scripture, and again, this video lesson is about the Ten Commandments. Do we keep them or not? All right, so Matthew, this is uh, what we read, what we had on our slides, but this is actually the text, Matthew 22, uh, verses 36 through 40. And they approach Jesus and say, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now understand, this is referred to here as the greatest. Which is the greatest? In other words, which is the first one? Which is the greatest? And God and Jesus responds and said, The greatest. The greatest is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He said, this is the first and great commandment. I want to put some emphasis on that right there. Hallelujah. This is the first and great commandment. All right. And the second, remember, we only saw two for us now. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Watch this. On these two. I get so excited. Not 10, but on these two commandments hang. See that there? 
on these two commandments hang all the law remember the ten commandments is the law on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets amen so what i tell people new convert or uh experienced believer glory to god seasoned believer amen jesus has made it so easy amen for us to focus on keeping two commandments just love god with all your heart all your mind and all your soul and the second one is like it uh love your neighbor as yourself those two one deals with god the other deals with man one deals with your vertical relationship the other deals with your horizontal relationship let's get more scripture uh john saint john chapter 1 verses 14 through 17. hallelujah this is about jesus and the word was made flesh now you must know jesus it was the word he is the word and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth i want you to pay attention to these words amen full of grace and truth grace and truth we are in the dispensation now of not only grace but this is the dispensation of grace and truth i want to say that again verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth write down in your notebook about this particular lesson jesus came to give us grace and truth all right continue reading john bear witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom i spake he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me and of his fullness verse 16 and of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace I could preach right here. That is a term that I love so much. Grace for grace. Amen. You can't run out of it. When things seem like they are overwhelming you, when they seem like, amen, you, when you feel like you've been, you're being overcome by things, God has given us grace for grace. Another way to say it is grace on top of grace. Hallelujah. All right. Here's what I really want to get to. Verse number 17 because we're talking about the law we're talking about the ten commandments and verse 17 says for the law was given by moses that was another dispensation the law was given by moses for that dispensation but we are now in the dispensation of grace and truth so for the law was given by moses but grace and truth came by jesus christ we are living now hallelujah amen walking it out in the dispensation or the time of grace and truth that's where we're currently at and we say that to say the law was given by moses back then in that particular dispensation that dispensation was known as the dispensation of the law we don't we're not in that dispensation now our dispensation is grace and truth and that's why jesus amen took those original 10 and condensed them into two so that we could walk it out under grace and truth somebody ought to give god praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to god amen i just want to see how many scriptures we got we have two more james chapter 2 and verse number 10 james chapter 2 and verse number 10 for whosoever look at this right here whosoever that's important for whosoever shall keep the whole law 
All right, we're going to refer to those 10 commandments that was given by God to Moses. Whosoever in this dis dispensation of grace and truth, whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point. So if you're trying to walk out, amen, the 10 commandments, which put you back under the law, which Jesus Christ came from, for to redeem us. He was born under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Why would you want to go back under the law? And Jesus Christ has redeemed you from that law and moved us into a whole nother dispensation. His coming to earth, dying on the cross, amen, paying for our sins, opened up a new dispensation. It opened up a new covenant. Oh my God, hallelujah. And you know, I'm just dealing with the 10 commandments right here, but I should do a teaching on, amen, how, how a testament or will is enforced. Jesus Christ coming and dying opened up, amen, a new testament or will because a will is not enforceable until the testator dies. But I don't want to go there right now. So back to this verse number 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, you're trying to walk under the law and you try to keep the whole law and you offend in one point, the Bible says, he is guilty of all. You see it. I'm not making this up. This is the word of God. It's found in James chapter 2 and verse number 10. What does that mean for us? It means, amen, if you want to go back under the law, amen, to me it is saying, and it's not just to me, it's scripture. This is scripturally sound, amen, that, that, that you don't appreciate Amen. What Jesus did. Amen. He died to have you come out of that dispensation, to have you come out from up under the law so that you can walk on, amen, the greatest commandment, which is the love, the first and greatest commandment, which is the love of God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second, which is to love your neighbor as yourself on these two, two. All of this is on our quiz. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. And so he's saying, if you try to, if you try to live like that, you Ten Commandment keepers, if you try to live like that, the Bible says, if you offend or if you mess up or if you break one of them, then you'll be charged with breaking all of them. Now, I'm going to say this, when Moses came down, when God gave Moses, amen, those commandments, the law, and he was making his way down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, and he began to see that the people, amen, had, had created a golden calf and was beginning and was already, amen, worshiping it and dancing and having and doing all kind of, uh, uh, I'm just not even going to name it here, all kind of wicked things were going on, amen. The reason that Moses uh, was heated and upset and broke the original 10 commandments amen there is a picture in that because the first commandment of the 10 commandments is you shall have no other god before me and so with them offending law number one it made the remaining nine laws of none effect if you break one especially the greatest, the first one, you're guilty of all of them. Ooh, I hope you got that today. Hallelujah to God. That's what was behind him breaking them. Amen. In those people, breaking the first commandment. Amen. In Israel, amen. The children of Israel, breaking the first commandment. They had broken all of them. Amen. It is saying if our relationship with God is not right, hallelujah, everything is out of order. 
And that's why, again, Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What I want you to get out of this is you don't have to live. You know, the original question for this lesson is, do we keep the 10 commandments? Yes or no? No. Hallelujah. If we focus on the two, amen, it will honor all 10 of them. Glory to God. And our final scripture today is in um, Galatians. Galatians. I don't know why I got this white screen down here. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 14. Wow. Look at this about the law. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Woo! Thank you. I'm so blessed by this teaching for all the law all of it is fulfilled in one word even this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself for all the law it's all about love amen instead of trying to uh, be law keepers Amen. If you operate in love, it will take care of all of the commandments. If you love God, amen, and love your neighbor, amen, you won't steal from your neighbor. You won't try to kill your neighbor. You won't try to covet. You won't bear false witness against your neighbor. So our focus, amen, as believers under the dispensation of grace and truth, is to focus on love. Love is everything. Love covers a multitude of faults. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, this lesson here on the Ten Commandments has really, really been a blessing to me. I just want to go back and check and make sure I gave you everything that I was supposed to give you on this lesson. And hopefully this has answered the question for you. Hallelujah. Do I keep the Ten Commandments? They weren't done away with. Amen. They weren't done away with. They were, uh, they were bundled into two. So the Ten was bundled or condensed into two. So how many commandments do we keep? Two. Jesus came to make it so much more easy for us. All right. Well, thank you. That concludes, amen, the lesson on the Ten Commandments. Do we keep them? And uh, in closing, I just want to go back to uh, share my screen one more time and remind you uh, of the lessons that we have recorded and those lessons that are up and coming. Amen. And once again, we're calling this uh, Discipleship 3.0, Discipleship Class 3.0 or you can just call it Discipleship 3.0. And here's all the lessons. This is the entire curriculum. Uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit, denomination, holiness and sanctification, religion versus relationship. Do we keep the Ten Commandments? That's what we did in this video. Upcoming, salvation and repentance, the sacraments of the church, tithing, Old and New Testament, spiritual gifts, discipleship and fellowship. Thank you so, so very much, amen, for watching these videos, and I will see you in the next video.